Hello and welcome to yet another episode of your favorite maritime television program, Nimasa This Week, the voice of maritime. As always, Nimasa This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's designated authority for the management of our ocean resources and all ocean-going activities, especially shipping and the safety of our seafarers. And of course, not forgetting our environment. My name is Ubong Isen. As always, I will be your guide on this voyage. You are watching Nimasa This Week. Nimasa This Week. Nimasa This Week. Nimasa This Week. It's the voice of maritime. The voice of maritime. The voice of maritime. Please stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. And if you are one of those who have wondered what exactly does Nimasa do, well, if you have a pen and a notepad, this might just be a quick lesson on the various activities carried out by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. So if you're ready, let's quickly run through them. Number one. Effective Maritime Safety Administration. Two, Maritime Labor Regulation. Three, Marine Pollution Prevention and Control. And number four, if you saw those deep blue helicopters last week, then you'll understand that Nimasa bears responsibility for search and rescue. Next is number five, and that is Cabotage Enforcement especially as it relates to local participation in the harnessing of our maritime resources and enjoying the benefits therefrom. Number six, shipping development and ship registration. You should not and you are not permitted by law to operate any ship in our waters if that ship is not registered. Number seven, training and certification of our seafarers. And finally, Number eight is maritime capacity development. As the program unfolds weekly, we will take the time to explain these various functions of NIMASA so that Nigerians can collectively come to appreciate how strategically important the agency is to our development. And now to our menu for today's episode. As always, we'll begin with our DG's diary, what has Dr. Bashir Jamu, the Director General of NIMASA, been up to? You get to find out on DG's diary. We also have on today's episode our nautical chart with no less a person than a practitioner himself, a sailor of sailors. I'm talking about Captain Emmanuel Ihianacho, who is the Chief Executive of Integrated Oil and Gas. And the focus of that chart continues the campaign of the DG of NIMASA on war risk insurance and how the recently launched Deep Blue project can ultimately play a role in helping to bring down the cost of goods. Why are Nigerian bound cargoes levied at such a high premium? Well, our guest points the way to how Nigeria can begin to challenge these levies in order to bring down the costs of shipping and ultimately trickle down the benefits to the average consumer of goods imported. And that, of course, includes yourself and myself. And, of course, we have our other regulars. So, if you're ready, let's anchor away. 
Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0800-063-067-0708-0005-956-0700-0700-010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call 0700-0700-020-0700-0700-030. Also via VHF Radio Channel 16. Call and the master will respond. The G7++ Friends of the Gulf of Guinea held a virtual meeting to further discuss the security situation of the region and foster better collaboration to address it. In his good room message, the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Kitak Lim, said that the security situation in the Gulf of Guinea remains topmost on IMO's priority while commending the efforts of NEMASA through the launch of the Deep Blue Project. As stakeholders, we must act now and take actions necessary to confront these issues head on. In this context, I was very encouraged by the launch of the Deep Blue project on 10th June and would like to express my appreciation to Nigerian government and its maritime administration and safety agency, NIMASA, and its commitment to the fight against piracy. I am also grateful to all other coastal states in the region that have also made positive strides in the area of interagency cooperation and response and must also be commended for their efforts. The Director General of the MASA, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, in his address, reflected on Nigeria's intervention with the Gulf of Guinea nations in December 2020 to create a framework that has improved collaboration against the threat of maritime insecurity. I am pleased to report, since your last meeting, Nigeria has created a strong partnership with Admiral Pestudo and colleagues at ICC in Yaoundé. And together we have delivered on that undertaking. The inaugural meeting of the Maritime Collaboration Forum of Gulf of Guinea, or SHED, will be held on July 14, 2021. Then the Massa boss noted that this development is a significant step that was made possible by the genuine commitment and partnership from the several key stakeholders and institutions. It was pleasing that during the MSC 103, the leadership efforts of Nigeria were endorsed by the IMO, who supports the creation of new framework. This boost was welcome and gives confidence to our joint and regional attempt to address the menace of attack within the waters of Gulf of Guinea. Dr. Jamo said that NEMASA is forging ahead to improve regional cooperation and appeal to the G7 friends of the Gulf of Guinea to continue to join hands with NEMASA in the fight against piracy in the region. My message to the G7++ is join and work with us on this journey to resolve the maritime security issues before us. We must ensure alignment with the working group activities there is no place for competition, only collaboration. We welcome all stakeholders who share in the concern of safety of shipping within the Gulf of Guinea and look forward to synchronizing the value you can add to our shared strategic commitment and investment. The recent launch by Nigeria of Deep Blue Project will not have gone unnoticed I am pleased to inform you all the assets and platforms were formally launched and now deployed. This is a testament 
to Nigerian maritime security readiness and will aid the output of shape. In closing, he thanks the G7 for their commitment and the wealth of experience they brought to bear while inviting them to be part of the first plenary session of Maritime Collaboration Forum of the Gulf of Guinea, Shared Awareness and Deconfliction, GOG-MCF-SHADE, scheduled to be held on the 14th of July, 2021. Give us like an overview of the convention. Being the significant one that regulates the industry, it appears to be quite um, important and relevant to the safety of life at sea. So just give us an, the objective of the convention, of the SOLAS convention, and the overview of it. Thank you very much. I'll start with the objective. The SOLAS convention was adopted by the IMO specifically to specify minimum. When you say IMO, International Maritime Organization. Yes, yes. the International Maritime Organization to specify minimum standards for the construction, equipment, and operation of ships, to enhance safety of ships, safety of um, navigation, and of course, security. The SOLAS Convention is quite bulky, as in the document itself, and it's been divided into two parts. The first part has to do with the articles, the requirements, and what have you. The second part has to do with the list of certificates that are supposed to be carried on board the vessel and also resolutions of the Maritime Safety Conference that have been adopted by state parties. The convention contains 14 chapters. Who exactly does this SOLAS convention apply to? What kind of vessels, how do they apply to these um, vessels? We who are those that um, need to um, comply with the provisions of the SOLAS Convention? In answering that question, I'll be putting it into three parts. Number one, I'll be looking at where it applies, and I'll also talk about where it does not apply. I'll also be looking at the exceptions and possibly the exemptions of the SOLAS Convention. The Convention applies to ships, that our international voyage, that is, it includes passenger ships and as well as cargo vessels that are 500 gross tonnage and above. It does not apply to warships. It does not apply to vessels that are not mechanically propelled. It does not apply to fishing vessels. It does not apply to non-commercial -com pleasure craft. It doesn't apply to sailing ships and um, primitive wooden ships. Mr. Anthony Pregraffi, can you shed more light on how this SOLAS Convention is being um, implemented in Nigeria? What does the administration, the MASA, what do they do to ensure compliance with this SOLAS Convention? Uh, the convention has been implemented or is being implemented. Uh, the administration carries out the necessary surveys aligned with the provisions of uh, the convention, uh, registration of vessels, both uh, post-it activities. Everything, as my colleague has uh, rightly pointed out, stated in those uh, regulations, have been implemented. They are being implemented by the NEMASA? By the agency. So yes. are they part of Nigerian laws? Where can um, stakeholders, ship owners, where can they find um, what to do or to comply with in terms of the SOLAS Convention? Yeah, the convention has been domesticated okay. by virtue of... Uh, so it's part of Nigerian maritime law, laws? Yes, by virtue of the Martian Shipping Act Section 215, domesticated the convention. 
stakeholders can always um, make reference, make to, reference the, to the marketing shipping act exactly. 2007. Oh, thank you, sir. Mrs. Unpubre, a contracting state or a country can decide to set the bar higher. The Solar Convention just provides minimum standards and the country can set it higher and make it apply to all these exceptions you've talked about. So you are going to talk about the exemptions. What are the now, exempted? The, the, the administration can exempt vessels that are just on a single international voyage, you know. But with that exemption, you also have to notify the IMO, that's the International Maritime Organization, that, you know, this vessel has been exempted from for, the provisions of the, the Solar Convention. The Solar Conve Convention. It also exempts um, vessels that are on a kind of research where the application of the convention will impede the safety or the development of standards if the vessel is on a research a voyage, voyage or, or it's trying to do research to develop a certain area, you know, if the application is going to impede on that. Yes. Applying the Solace Convention yes. is going to impede, impede that research. On the research. Such vessels Such can, vessel can actually be exempted. Mr. Freire, Anthony Fregafi, thank you for coming on the segment today. Thank you for um, your insights into the Solas Convention. Thank you for Mrs. Ari thank you for coming on our segment today. It was nice having you. Thank you for having me. Viewers, that's as much as we can take on today's segment. See you next time for the concluding part of the Solas Convention. Thank you. At last, the new maritime collaboration framework to tackle piracy in the Gulf of Guinea is here. The Interregional Coordinating Center, Yaoundé, and Nigeria announced the inaugural plenary of the Gulf of Guinea Maritime Collaboration Forum and Shared Awareness and Deconfliction, GOG-MCF-SHADE. Further to the communique of the 26th of April 2021, in which the Interregional Coordination Center, ICC, Yaoundé and Nigeria announced the formation of an international framework to provide shared awareness and deconfliction of activities in the Gulf of Guinea, named Gulf of Guinea Maritime Collaboration Forum, SHADE, GOG-MCF slash SHADE. We are pleased to announce the inaugural plenary meeting, which will take place on Wednesday, 14th July 2021. The online meeting will be hosted by the Gulf of Guinea Maritime Institute, Accra, Ghana, and will be by invitation of the Shade Co Chairs, the ICC, and the Nigerian Navy. It's time to change the narrative. should really uh, be of concern mostly to people who are importing goods, not really to the ship owner. Basically what war risk means is if an area is designated a, uh, a war-like area, then in addition to the ordinary premiums that you pay, they charge an additional uh, premium depending on the risk that they think that vessels and the um, owners of cargo will run when they come to that area. And as you know, the cost in international trade get passed on. So for instance, if a container is coming down here and they slap on war risk insurance on it, it doesn't mean that a, uh, the shipper is going to be at it. That cost will carry on to the cost of the goods and so you pay more for it. So that's why it was very important. I did hear when the Honorable Minister for Transport mentioned war risk insurance. And I was very pleased that he had indeed uh, thought about the matter. Because if you, people keep on saying, oh, there is war in Nigerian waters, there are pirates and thieves, there are all kinds of things. So every good that passes through Nigerian waters will be slapped with war risk insurance. And what it means is that effectively, the consumer of the goods that are carried in the trade will pay that extra cost. And if you cannot pay, then there is a diminution in uh, the quality of your life because your money is not buying as much of the goods as you should have bought. 
So that is really what the War Risk Insurance is all about. It will not uh, happen automatically. You know, if somebody is uh, used to charging a certain amount of money for goods to travel in a certain trade, so then you make amendments in terms of the conditions of that trade, you know, people would prefer, if they can get away with it, to continue to charge what they charged in the past. So it's entirely up to the person who's making the investment, in this case, the federal government, to communicate to the international trading community that all that complaints that you used to have about the inadequacy of security provision in our waters, look at what, are what we have provided. We have provided aircrafts. We have provided a fast air patrol vessels. We have provided a communications gears. We have absolutely minimized the risk that ships and the goods that they carry run in our waters. And so if you have a forum where you could start a dialogue with a, uh, the international trading community, you can indeed hone down to the point where you say, this is the right freight that you can charge for goods that are going to Nigeria. And this extra war risk premium, you have to let go. Because at the end of the day, if it is charged, then it is the Nigerian consumer that pays it. Well, I mean, there, is, there are international bodies that actually regulate a, uh, international trade. World Trade Organization is there. And that is the forum, to my mind, where you can discuss uh, these issues. When you look at it uh, on a national basis, look at Shippers Council is there, trying in some sense to actually regulate the issue of costs of doing business in Nigeria maritime waters. It wouldn't be asking too much if you ask the Shippers Council, for instance, to engage with WTO to say on the issue of this extra charges that we have been bearing over time, we have now made sufficient investments to give comfort to those who participate in our trade. And we want to see in proper physical, physical terms a reduction. It's not, we will give you a reduction. No, we want to know. A container traveling from Lagos or traveling from the UK to Lagos, how much does it cost? A comparable container traveling, a comparable distance elsewhere, how much does it cost? And then we can extrapolate from these two information what the extra charges we are bearing is. And we can then uh, set that as a basis for seeking uh, to get uh, discounts and reductions from uh, those who have been levying these charges over time. It's very simple. If the reduction is achieved, then the person who consumes the goods doesn't pay as much for them as he used to. Again, it might be necessary for you to, if I say have a word with uh, the shippers, again, these are the people, these are the uh, people who the shippers council will engage. We are getting discounts from the uh, insurance people. This has to be passed on. You know, because you cannot appropriate it and say, well, you've gotten this discount. Maybe you get discount of uh, $50 and you want to add another $50. So as far as the man is concerned in the market, he's paying the same thing that he paid. No, we have secured a discount of $50 or $100 per container or $200 or $300. And we want to see this passed on to the person who consumes the goods. Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0800-0685-167-0708-0005-956-0700-0700-010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call. 0700-0700-020-0700-0700-030. Also via VHF Radio Channel 16. Call and the master will respond.
Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of Maritime, and I hope you have been enjoying the program so far. And we'd like you to continue the conversation, especially on the issue of war risk insurance, because whether you like it or not, it affects every one of us. And we have our social media platforms all displayed on your screen for these conversations to continue. You can engage with the DG of Nimasa on all of the various social media handles. And also we have our official Nimasa social handles as displayed and our official Nimasa website. Don't you ever forget, before venturing into the maritime space, the Nimasa official website is your number one go-to in order to avoid taking the wrong steps. for watching today's episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. Remember that life is like the ocean. It goes up and down. But I trust that you will continue to stay the course. My name remains Ubangisen, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.